We all know that buildings are made from bricks, wood, metal. But what are we made of? Welcome to Beginner's Biology, where I'm hoping to give you a quick guide to basic biology content, either as a study aid or for general interest in the subject. Today's video will be a basic overview of cells, the building blocks of life. We are going to look at the parts that make up cells and why cells are important. So what are cells? As I've said before, cells are regarded as the building blocks of life and are the smallest biological structure that have the capacity to survive and replicate by itself. The amount of cells that an organism can have varies from as low as a single cell in organisms such as bacteria to several million, billion, even trillion in complex multicellular organisms such as plants and animals. In these organisms, cells act like bricks in a building and work together to form the complex structures that these organisms are. Cells can be split into two groups, eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The defining difference between these cell types are that eukaryotes have a defined nucleus structure, whereas prokaryotic cells do not. Eukaryotes also have a range of complex membrane-bound compartments within the cell, whereas prokaryotes have simplistic compartments in comparisons. These compartments are called organelles. Eukaryotic cells are often much larger than prokaryotic cells, and as such are usually found in complex multicellular organisms such as animals, plants and fungi. Prokaryotes have a simple structure by comparison and comprise of archaeal and bacterial organisms. So what do these cells typically look like? What differences are there between cells from different organisms? We will look at eukaryotic cells first, with an emphasis on animal and plant cells. Taking a look at basic representations of these cells, we can see that they are bordered by a cell membrane, with the inside filled with an aqueous solution called the cytoplasm, where the cell's contents are stored, including the organelles. These include the nucleus, where DNA is stored and maintained, the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes and Golgi apparatus or Golgi body, which are involved mainly in protein synthesis and transport. Mitochondria, where the majority of the cell's energy source is produced. Intracellular compartments that are responsible for the transport, storage and recycling of various molecules. And centrioles, which are primarily important in cell division. Plant cells have extra organelles that animal cells do not possess, including chloroplasts, where photosynthesis occurs, and the vacuole, which is a large storage compartment that is important for the cell structure and maintenance. In both cell types, all of these structures are held in place by the cytoskeleton, which is also used for transport, dividing and maintaining the cell shape. Plants also have a cell wall surrounding the membrane for extra protection and structural support. These are basic representations of these cells that contain all common organelles. Cell contents and structure can vary drastically depending on the cell's function, and similar cells work together in large groups called tissues. Tissues, and the cells that make them up, vary depending on the job that they need to do, such as movement in muscles, communication in nerve cells in the brain, to protection in the skin. Each type of cell, and the tissues that they form, have their own role in keeping the organism working efficiently. Prokaryotic cells have fewer cellular structures when compared with eukaryotic cells, and are more suited to survival as a single organism. Bacterial cells are the most well known of the prokaryotic cells, so I'll focus on these cells for this example. Like eukaryotic cells, they are contained within cell membranes, with the cytoplasm inside. These cells can either have a single membrane or a double membrane with a small fluid space between them. Instead of a nucleus that eukaryotic cells have, the majority of genetic material is stored inside of a shapeless, dense region called the nucleoid, with the rest of the genetic material stored in the cytoplasm in small loops of DNA called plasmids. These are often acquired from the environment and can give the cell a survival advantage over other bacterial cells. Other structures that can be found include ribosomes, which are smaller in these cells than in eukaryotic cells, inclusion bodies, which are compartments similar to those found in eukaryotic cells, and a cytoskeleton to maintain the cell's structure in the same way as eukaryotic cells. Bacterial cells often have a cell wall, which can mainly come in two forms and depend on the membrane structure of the cell. A cell that has a single membrane will often possess a thick cell wall on the outside of the cell, with a double membrane cell having a thin cell wall in the space between the two membranes. These cells also have flagella, anchored to the cell membrane and cell wall, and protrude from the outside of the cell. These structures are used for movement of the cell in its environment, should they require it. Bacteria can come in four main shapes or morphologies. The rod-shaped bacillus shown on the left, spherical coccus form shown on the right, spiral shaped spirochete, and a comma or curved rod shaped vibrio form. 
Bacteria may be small and relatively simple compared to eukaryotic cells, but they're some of the oldest organisms on the planet and are essential for many factors that most plants and animals need to survive. Bacteria such as Escherichia coli or E. coli live happily in our digestive system and aid us in digesting some food products that we are unable to, while soil bacteria such as Rhizobia live in plant root nodules and convert nitrogen into a form that plants need to grow. Bacteria aren't always good for us though, as infections that cause us harm can arise from bacteria being transferred from one animal to another, such as with food poisoning caused by Salmonella, which can be found naturally in chicken, whilst native bacteria to us, including Staphylococcus aureus and even E. coli, can cause us problems if they end up living somewhere that they are not meant to be. And this concludes an overview of cells and why they are important. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. Thanks again for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.